ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وحده في ذاته ووحده في صفاته وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا وبعد فقد قال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة آل عمران بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله ولو آمن أهل الكتاب لكان خيرا لهم منهم المؤمنون وأكثرهم الفاسقون صدق الله مولانا العظيم رب شرح لي صدري وسلي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Brothers and sisters, the ayah I opened up with from Surah Ali Imran is very clear. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best ummah. You are the final ummah Allah raised for a purpose. And the purpose is to serve humanity. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. Of course, our first and the number one priority toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to worship Him. But the second obligation is to make sure that we we are the leaders of humanity and we are taking care of a humanity. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas, produced to serve mankind, to serve the people. And uh, how are you going to serve the people? Among other things, ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna an al munkar, you ordain. You enjoin what is good and forbid what is evil. So this ayah clearly identifies this ummah to be the most honored ummah of all the ummah, although this is not our condition today. On the other hand, our condition is exactly the opposite. Perhaps because we failed to uphold our responsibilities of our ma'roof and nahi an munkar. So today I would like to speak about civic engagement as our priority in light of this general statement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas civic engagement not only is it a religious obligation but our number one a priority today in this toxic political climate where Muslims are subjected to all sorts of hate and bigotry the thing to do is to come together and have a unified agenda and the agenda is clear وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Again, you find in the same surah, a couple of ayat before ayah 110 I opened up with, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is charging the believers with basically two duties here. Let from among you Muslims rise a group, an ummah that will call to khair, yad'una ila al-khair, to goodness, number one. And number two, وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ Again, this group should ordain, enjoin what is good and what is right and forbid what is evil. This is our religious duty. This collective duty calls all Muslims to work together to eliminate injustice. Now there is two parts to this call, of course. The first part is called to goodness and the second part is Amr al-Ma'roof and Nahi al-Munkar. Two sides of the same coin. You cannot separate the two. So calling to goodness or khair is indeed our collective duty. Although it is also individual, but it is collective. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ From among you. Obviously, Allah did not charge the children and the mothers and the elderly to take up 
those responsibilities because of their condition and who they are. But everybody else, it is their responsibility collectively to come together and fulfill these responsibilities. So whether we are calling Muslims back to the Qur'an or calling humanity toward the path to salvation, this duty requires engagement. Can't happen like this out of the blue. It requires engagement. There are many ways to engage with others. One of the most effective ways to engage with the larger community is through civic engagement. Through civic engagement, we are able to fulfill both requirements of the agenda da'wah as well as amr ma'roof and nahi anil munkar. The Quran and the Sunnah, both sources, stress the importance of getting involved, getting engaged in the community, particularly with the non Muslims and non Muslim community. Today, with the heightened Islamophobia, we do have allies to work with. And there is nothing wrong to work with non-believers on common issues, particularly issues that deal with social justice, issues that affect all people, not only Muslims. Muslims are not the only target, by the way. All minorities are targeted, are subjected to the rhetoric of hate and bigotry. We must work with all people of conscience, who stand up for human rights, dignity, and justice. Think of the Prophet ﷺ and his prophetic mission. In spite of all persecution, now this is where we draw our guidance from, the Quran and the Sunnah. In spite of all the persecution, the few believers stood firm in their belief and struggled until they prevailed. They did not give up. They continued the struggle. Some of them gave their lives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we say for the sake of Allah, we mean for the sake of justice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not raise Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to just to preach a religion. He ordered Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to establish a community based on justice and fair play. And they withstood, the few believers that were with the Prophet ﷺ, due to their firm belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they struggled and they prevailed. Muslims may, just may, who knows, if in this upcoming election, God forbid, the Republican Party wins, just may be subjected to persecution. Are you ready for that? I'm serious about this. You know what I'm talking about. Are you ready for that? We must work with all people of conscience to stop this madness. The Prophet, after the demise of his uncle, Abu Talib, and after realizing that going to a Ta'if was not after all such a good idea and because his life was on the line his life was threatened by the chieftains of Quraysh the Prophet eventually entered Mecca under the protection of a mushrik no other than Mut'am bin Adi of a mushrik he could have said no man you don't say la ilaha illallah I can't take your protect brothers, let us understand how the Prophet did things and how we, deriving guidance from the Prophet وسلم, can do the same. Yes, we can work with mushriks, we can work with anybody as long as they are upholding the most cherishable values of justice, freedom, equality. Consider also the Hilf al-Fudul, another example I would like to bring into our discussion here regarding, you know, working with others. 
بحل في الفضول or the league of the virtuous in the house of Abdullah bin Jad'an there was a meeting various chiefs and members of tribes came together this is way before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam became prophet he was a young man and he was present in this hilf al-fudul he was with his uncles and hilf al-fudul the tribes all these tribe leaders pledged to basically two things to respect the principles of justice and to collectively intervene in conflicts to establish justice that was way before Muhammad became a prophet and was commissioned with this with this mission of establishing Allah's kingdom here on earth so the pact was written and actually placed inside the Kaaba the place where the participants believed it would be under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a young man he accompanied his uncles to witness this covenant now that was years before islam after muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was successful in establishing islam and later many years later he sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the following and ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال شهدت مع عمومتي حلف الفضول فما سرني بذلك حمر النعم أنا هذا حديث عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول شهدت في دار عبد الله بن جدعان من حلف الفضول ما لو دعيت إليه اليوم لأجبت سبحان الله he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I was present, I'm combining both hadith together, I was present when a covenant was agreed upon in the house of Abdullah ibn Jud'an. And I would not accept red camels. This is the highest quality of camels at that time. In lieu of it, had I been asked to uphold it even in the days of Islam, I would have agreed. I would have responded without any question. Why would he have responded? Because the matter involves social justice. It's not about faith. It's not about beliefs. Beliefs are personal. They are between the individual and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But matters of justice, this we learn from the Qur'an and the Sunnah that it is a collective matter. It involves everyone wherever you are. All the people, regardless of their creed or whatever they believe in. As long as the goal is in line with the teachings of Islam, we must respond and we have to. And with the rise of Islamophobia, we have to position ourselves in a way where we can defend ourselves. There are many organizations and individuals who would like to help and be on our side. We need to find them and we need to work with them. It is our responsibility to seek them, build relationships with them, and work together to uphold common and universal values. There are challenges, however, no doubt, the challenges can be overcome if we have the desire to civically engage. The civic engagement must be based on justice and this must be the foundation of our framework. And the ayat are very clear. You know, after Allah being qa'iman bil qist, the establisher of justice, he sent his messengers to establish justice لقد أرسلنا رسولنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط After the messengers the ayah is very clear from Surah Al-Hadid Indeed we had been sending our messengers with the clear proofs and evidences with the miracles and also with the book and the mizan the scale of right and wrong 
what for? So that men may establish and abide by justice. That's the mission of all messengers of Allah. And after the messengers of Allah, it extends now to who? The believers, the mu'mineen, the Muslims. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, kunu qawwameena bil qisti shuhada'a lillah, walau ala anfusikum abu al-walidayn wal-aqrabeen. إن يكون غنيا أو فقيرا إلى آخر الآية أو يو هو بليف ستاند أب فيرملي فور جاستس أز ويتنسز تو الله سبحانه وتعالى ذيس إز ذا أمة ذات إز جوين تو ويتنس أوفر هيومانيتي أون ذا داي أوف جادجمنت أن شهداء وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطاء لتكونوا شهداء على الناس أي جيف يو ذا ون آية كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس you are the best ummah produced for humanity. The other praise for the ummah is Ayah 143 from Surah Al-Baqarah. In this way we made you a middle moderate nation so you may be witnesses over humanity. We have to stand up for justice as witnesses to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other ayah is very clear from Surah Al-Ma'idah. This one from Surah Al-Nisa. Surah Al-Ma'idah says, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, كونوا قوامين لله شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون أو يهو بليب stand up for God because justice stems from him he is the establisher of justice so now you have to stand up for Allah سبحانه وتعالى whenever you do anything that involves justice, you are standing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is what he wants. He is qa'iman bil qist. But he wants you to be witnesses for justice. And don't let the hatred between you and somebody else make you swerve from doing justice. I'dilu! Even if you have enmity, you still have to be just. And establish justice. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ And have taqwa of Allah, fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is well aware of what you are doing. Although there is so much good in our societies, there is also injustice, we all know that. Systematic and institutionalized racism. Islamophobia, racial profiling, police brutality are among the biggest injustices we face today. Not to speak of environmental issues, unjust wars, killing and maiming of civilians with drones, occupation and usurpation of lands. Injustice everywhere. If you consider yourself part and parcel of the society, then you need to act. You need to do something. We need to act. We need to do something. We cannot afford to remain in our comfort zone. Not caring about issues that in some cases affect us directly as individuals, as Muslims, as a community, the Muslim community, and as a society, the community at large. If you see injustice, it's your duty personally to change it. And of course, collectively. The Prophet clearly mentioned in a hadith on Abi Sa'id al-Khuduri radiallahu anhu, Man ra'a minkum munkaran, fal yugayyiruhu bi yadihi, fal lam yastati' fa bi lisanihi, fal lam yastati' fa bi qalbihi, wa thalika adha'afu al-iman. A believer should never ever let one day be passed when you see injustice and don't respond to it, even if it would be by feeling within you that this is not good, this is bad, this is wrong, even to that degree. And the Prophet said, وَذَلِكَ أَضْعُفُ iman." This is the weakest of faith. This is the least we can do, is to feel the pain in our hearts when injustice is being committed. But if you are able to change it, بِيَدِهِ And yet, every time you hear the word yad, tabarak alladhi بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ It denotes authority. So, مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ بِيَدِهِ If you can, through the authority, if you have the authority 
to change it, by all means do it if you can. Then the Prophet said, speak out against it. Bilal spoke out against oppression and all sorts of injustice. Ahadun Ahad. He was not afraid. He spoke. The Sahaba spoke. The Sahaba stood up for what they believed in. And we have to do the same. Man ra'a minkum munkaran fal yughayyiruhu bi yadihi fa in lam yastati' fa bi lisanihi fa in lam yastati' fa bi qalbihi wa dhalika adhafu al-iman. We must speak out against all forms of injustices whether it concerns us or not. Unfortunately, much of it concern us Muslims and we need to speak out against it. Among the things we can do, brothers and sisters, is number one, we must spare some time of our time and serve the community. This is one of the best ways to be engaged, is to volunteer. Government social services is but a small percentage of the social services rendered by nonprofit organizations, programs that include Feed the Hungry, and we do have programs, Fight Against Hunger, you know, Shelter the Homeless, uh, the Blood Drives, Care for the Elderly, Free Health Clinics. We need to participate. We need to become volunteers. We need to provide the community, our community and the larger community, with all the services we can, without volunteers and such endeavors would come to a standstill. The Prophet ﷺ in a hadith said, a person who strives to take care of the needs of the widow and the poor man is like one who struggles in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like a mujahid, one who fights for the cause of Allah, or like one who stands during the night to pray and fasts during the day. So you can imagine how meritorious, how rewardable be an active in the community, volunteering, serving others, how great that service is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to cultivate a culture of volunteerism. Our primary motivation for helping others should be for the sake and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no other reason. Don't think that your labor will go unnoticed. Don't think that Allah is not watching. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقُلْ اِعْمَلُوا Go ahead, act. Get involved. فَسَيَرَ اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ Indeed, God will see your actions and also His Messenger and the believers. Imagine on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam displaying the great things we were doing. How proud will our Prophet be on that day? Indeed, he will see what we were doing. And of course, the believers as well. وَسَتُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Pay attention to this last part of the ayah. Indeed, you will be returning back to the one who knows both worlds, the unseen and the witnessed. And he will inform you of what you were doing. He will tell you whether you were on your Facebook and Twitter and other things on your, on your phone for hours when you could be helping your neighbor. He knows all these things. I'm not saying don't have a Facebook account and all these things. Use them to, the, to your advantage for your benefit and the benefit of humanity. Don't use them to pass time and have fun with them because Muslims were raised with an objective. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas. We have no time for entertainment. We have no time for leisure. We have a duty, we have a responsibility, and we have to do that. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us become the stewards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts of us here on earth, inshallah. اللهم آمين أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروه الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم ما بعد 
So civic engagement is one of the ways that we could fulfill our responsibilities. But there's another area of interest to us, and that is exercising our right to vote. Yes, you heard me right. I understand some might be entertaining the idea, oh, this is a Kafir country, oh, what are we going to get out of that, oh, this, oh, that. You can cry, rant, and rave. Unless you become active, you cannot have the hujjah on the Day of Judgment. Oh, Allah, I did what I can. There are nearly 8 million Muslims in America. African Americans make up anywhere from 23 to 30 percent. The rest are from the Middle East, Southeast Asia, East Asia, among others. So 70 percent, think about this, of Muslims are like all other immigrants who immigrated from their native countries to come and live here in America. No one compelled the immigrants to immigrate save the, the refugees who also, by their choice, wanted to come to America. But most American, 99% of the immigrants, they came for what? They made that choice to enjoy the prosperity, success of living a good life, amassing wealth, and so on and so forth here in this great good old America. For most of us, the economic opportunities here are much better than where we came from, a fact. Muslims in America are among the most affluent and most educated anywhere outside of Muslim countries. What does that tell you? We have power. We Muslims here in America have power. We're educated, we're wealthy, and we can change things. We just need to know what we need to do. We need leadership and we need direction. So with all this, yet we have no say in the affairs of the local governments, what to speak of the federal government. There are only two Muslim representatives in the House, Keith Allison and Andre Carson. Unless we become involved in the electoral politics, our conditions as Muslims are going to worsen. And with the rise of Islamophobia and the next presidential race, right-wing Republicans are rallying their campaigns against Muslims and Islam, you all know that, to score political points and win the election. We all know that. Let me make one thing clear. Regardless of what the counter-arguments are, voting according to overwhelming scholars is permissible. It is ja'iz, it is not haram. The Assembly of Muslim Jews of America, a very conservative fiqh body, have already permitted and issued fatwa. You should get involved. And also the Fiqh Council of North America, they also issued fatwa on this subject. The question is not whether it is halal or haram. The question is what are you doing about it? We are... What are you doing about the local politics particularly? Are we involved locally? Do we attend council meetings in our towns where they make decisions on our behalf? Are we involved in school boards in so many different areas? Think about that. This election is very crucial indeed. It will determine the future of Muslims, including our children here in this country. And we must not allow any candidate who spews venom against Muslims or minorities win. We must make sure that that does not happen. We must block them. And that can only be done by your vote. Your vote is very important. It's very precious. Don't waste it. We do what we can and we leave the rest, of course, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is part and parcel of our Amr Ma'roof and Nahi Anil Munkar duty, the obligation of enjoining good and forbidding evil. And remember that we are, you are, the Khalifa of Allah.
here on earth. Are we exercising our right to vote? Ask yourself that question. Are we registered to vote? Ask yourself that question. And those who are registered, are you voting? Do you know how many calls it takes for a registered voter to go out and vote? 13 calls. Why? Just do it. We can most certainly make a difference if we understand what is in it for our communities and the benefits we receive if we engage sincerely, honestly, and truly for a better community and society for all, not only Muslims, but for everybody. Imagine living the ideals of freedom, equality, and justice. October 7th, which is today, has been designated as a National Day of Action for Registering Muslim Voters. And the goal is to have an unprecedented National Muslim voter turn out on November 8th, the day of election, inshallah, God willing. That will send a very strong signal to the politicians that Muslims constitute a power here, a voting power here in America. And then, you know how things work here, then they will pay attention to you because they want your vote. You want my vote? I want you to do this for me. That's how it works. That's how it works. So we encourage you, of course, uh, register if you are not registered, and uh, we urge you to do it right away as soon as possible because the end of uh, registration is October 11, I believe. And it takes a couple of minutes to, to register. You can go to mymuslimvote.org, mymuslimvote.org. It will guide you on how to register. Above all, if you are registered, and if you are about to register, please vote. This is very important. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in this endeavor. And may Allah help us become better Muslims so we can have better conditions, inshallah, in our communities. Allahumma ameen. Inna Allahumma la ikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ayu alladhina amun. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Anna kahmeelun majeed. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اغفر لنا والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات اللهم ألف بين قلوبهم واجمع ذات بينهم وثبت أقدامهم وانصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم وارحمنا برحمتك الواسعة يا أرحم الراحمين وصلي اللهم على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة يرحمني وارحمكم الله